Hey, fellow Curiosity Cruisers, welcome back to the wild side, where science meets sass and learning's always a blast. Today, we're diving tail first into a topic that's sure to get some tails wagging if you catch my drift. We're talking about the big O. No, not Oprah. We're talking about orgasms. In animals. Yep, we're going there. Now, don't get too excited. We're keeping it PG-13 because, you know, science is for everyone. You might think that the birds and the bees are just about, well, birds and bees. But it turns out the animal kingdom is full of surprises. When it comes to studying the emotions or subjective experiences of animals, it is challenging due to the inherent limitations in our ability to interpret and measure such experiences. Insects, for example, lack the neurological complexity associated with the emotional experiences observed in mammals and their behaviors are often driven by instinct and biological imperatives rather than subjective feelings. However, the question of whether animals experience pleasure or even orgasm is a topic of serious investigation. Mounting evidence suggests that some animals may have experiences that could be analogous to human orgasms. Dr. James Faust and colleagues from Concordia University, Montreal, Canada, defined criteria to infer orgasm-like responses in other species. First, they proposed to use physiological criteria, including pelvic floor and anal muscle contractions that stimulate seminal emission and ejaculation in the male, or that stimulate uterine and cervical contractions in the female. In addition, they suggest assessment of short-term behavioral changes that reflect immediate awareness of a pleasurable hedonic reward state during copulation. And finally, to measure long-term behavioral changes that depend on the reward state induced by the orgasm-like responses, including sexual satiety, the strengthening of patterns of sexual arousal and desire in subsequent copulations, the generation of conditioned place and partner preferences for contextual and partner-related cues associated with the reward state. The scientists empirically prove that both male and female rats display behavioral patterns consistent with orgasm-like responses. Remarkably, two years after this publication, Professor Faust, a prolific researcher and internationally recognized expert in the psychology of sexual behavior, had to resign and even leave Canada due to allegations of inappropriate sexual relationships with his students. It looks like the professor did not just study sex in rats, but eventually moved on to pursue human investigations. Another often cited example is the work by Dr. Barry Komisaruk and colleagues who have studied neural responses in rats during copulation. They propose that certain neural patterns observed in rats are similar to those associated with orgasm in humans. However, interpretations of these findings remain a matter of debate. Now let's talk on our primate pals. You know, the ones who are just a banana peel slip away from being our cousins? Researchers observe these critters for the telltale signs of the big O, you know, the toe curling, branch shaking, oh my gosh, where have you been all my life reactions. But what about the ladies of the animal kingdom? Well, it's a bit of a mystery novel there. Female mammals have the equipment, all right. The clitoris is not just a human ladies exclusive club. In 1967, Dr. Doris Zumpi, a former student of Nobel laureate Conrad Lorenz, and Dr. Richard Michael performed a series of experiments in rhesus monkey. They provided a vivid description of the female monkey behavior during the ejaculatory mount of the male. Females were turning round, looking backward, lip smacking, clutching, and biting males. The scientists designated it as the clutching reaction and suggested that this reaction is actually an external expression of consummatory sexual behavior, homologous to orgasm in the human females. Other groups proved the existence of an orgasmic response in non-human primates. Some researchers even went further to show orgasm in homosexual relationships between female stump-tailed macaques. Dr. Goldfoot, along with colleagues, performed remarkable research that deserved to be published in the Science Journal. They described very intense tonic-clonic uterine contractions and sudden increases in heart rate in a normal female stump-tailed macaque engaged in homosexual mounting episodes. The same pattern was also observed in females engaged in heterosexual copulations. Dr. Goldfoot pioneered the objective approach to animal sexuality with direct measurements of uterine contractions during acts of sex. Okay, but what about insects? Do you remember Cole Porter mentioned that bees do it and even Birds educated do fleas do it? Bees do it. Even educated fleas do it. 
However, do they enjoy their sexual intercourse? In the world of fruit fly romance, the brain's reward system is like their own little love circuit. You see, successful mating is a big deal for these tiny winged matchmakers. It's so important that it triggers pleasure feelings, kind of like a fly high five. Turns out when male flies successfully copulate, it's not just about the deed, their brains get a boost of neuropeptide F, NPF, making them less interested in partying with ethanol, fly booze. A group of Israeli scientists from Bar Ilan University wanted to know if the grand finale, you know, the moment of truth could be the key to the reward. So they activated some special neurons with corazonin, the fly version of mood-enhancing magic. Guess what? The flies loved it. It turns out in the world of fruit fly love, a successful eureka moment is the real reward. In the realm of insect behavior, it's crucial to approach the concept of enjoyment cautiously, as it involves anthropomorphizing and projecting human emotions onto creatures with vastly different neurobiological structures. While scientists can study insect mating behaviors, courtship rituals, and physiological responses, Interpreting these in terms of emotional experience is speculative. The field of animal behavior focuses on understanding observable behaviors and their adaptive significance. But attributing human-like emotions to insects is generally avoided due to the lack of conclusive evidence. What drives mating behavior in insects is often a combination of biological imperatives related to reproduction, survival, and evolutionary fitness. So, what's the takeaway from our little nature's pleasure tour? Well, it seems like the animal kingdom might be more relatable than we thought. And who knows? Maybe they're having more fun out there than we are. But remember, folks, this is all in the name of science. We observe, we learn, and we respect the wild, wild lives of our animal buddies. Now, I've got a question for you. If you could ask any animal about their love life, which animal would it be and why? Drop your wild thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this romp through the animal's intimate escapades, give us a paw up, hit that subscribe button like it's mating season, and share this video with your pack. Until next time, keep it wild, keep it funny, and keep your curiosity on the prowl. Let's do it! Let's fall in love! Second chorus.